shall be the head and not the tail. God wants to do it in you. They're, you're not too old. You're not too young. Do you understand the power and authority that you have at your fingertips? I'm here to do your kingdom work, whatever that looks like. You're going to be burned. You're going to be carrying the fire, and it will repel every attack of the enemy. Welcome to the Worldwide Impact Party. I'm David Hogan here at the Worldwide Impact Studio here at Spring First Church. Man, we've got a lot going on in the world today. We're going to talk about current event, events, some fun stuff going on. We're titling this one Coronavirus and Divine Healing. Thoughts on the coronavirus and divine healing. We're going to look at what the Bible says about it. Uh, we'll talk about the church's response to it. You can comment your thoughts in the comments, give your input, do a little public discussion here. Uh, I'm going to share the broadcast. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to find it. I know it's live because I can see it here, but it's not popping up on my phone. So like the, and share the broadcast. Make sure that you go to the Worldwide Impact page and uh, like the page, that helps us out. And then also uh, set yourself up to receive um, notifications when we go live. That way you will be reminders. You will be reminded. You will get reminders is what I'm trying to say. Multitasking is not my strong suit. Okay, I shared it. We're live. All of you guys that are here watching, hey, Moses Garcia. I also saw you last night on Jonathan's broadcast. Can we talk about that for a second? Our friend Jonathan Shuttlesworth, uh, he hit a milestone yesterday. He ramped up uh, in a, broadcast, a live broadcast he did yesterday afternoon up over 1,000. I was excited to see that. I screenshotted it and sent it to him because I don't know if he saw it like pop over 1K. But that's a huge deal. If you don't think it's a big deal to get a bunch of people watching your broadcast, just start going live. And like building a, a regular audience of people uh, watching, that's a, that's a big deal. He's got a lot of followers, and it helps because he travels and has, be able, is able to add to his, I guess, the people that he's able to add followers that way because he goes to a bunch of different churches. But uh, getting a 1,000 people to watch your live broadcast is huge. Uh, I saw Ben Shapiro yesterday had over 34,000 watching. That was huge. That was huge for him too. So whether you like those people or, or not, they're some of the guys that I watch that do. They're like, I guess, forerunners of my generation in like the secular world and then then also in the Christian world of like doing live broadcasts. Ben Shapiro's, he's I think my same age and <laughs> his IQ is, I, I don't know, what's the highest I, IQ that you can have? I think his is like 700 or something like that. <laughs> and I, I know that's not the high, it, it's like much lower of the, you know, the, the cap is much higher. Is the highest IQ that you can have I think is in the hundreds or two hundreds. What is it, Joe? You don't know? I think that lowers your IQ if you don't know that number. I don't know that number, so find that out. And then let me know. Anyway, Shapiro's a smart guy. Anyway, share the broadcast. We're gonna talk about coronavirus. Um, man, it's gotten crazy since I, this is the first time I've been live in about all, almost two weeks. Thursday would be would be two weeks. We I was on vacation during spring break. <laughs> now our kids' spring break has been extended through April 10th. 
that's more than a spring break. That's just like, okay, school is over as you know it. I mean, when you go back, what do you, what do you even do for another month? It's like starting over. So who knows? Who knows? It's just been a, a, a crazy uh, spiral of events that have happened all across uh, the world. And I know uh, many of you are watching uh, the news regularly and, and seeing what's going on. As of right now, as of today, this, the live broadcast of this uh, is uh, the morning of, what is today, the 17th, St. Patty's Day, the morning of Tuesday, March 17th in the U.S., According to the CDC, I believe these numbers came out yesterday at noon. I'm just going by cdc.gov. Um, it's probably more than this, and we'll get another update. They update at noon on weekdays. But as of noon yesterday, uh, 3,487 cases in the U.S. and 68 deaths. Much lower than the amount of people that died of the flu last year. Just saying. I'm not saying that this is a fake virus. I believe that it is a, a very real thing and that, you know, per, obviously precautions are necessary. So, 228 is the highest recorded IQ. I think Ben Shapiro's is like double that. Really smart guy, really smart guy. So, um, Let's talk about the church's response about this. Man, it's been amazing to me how many people have been arguing and fighting about whether or not, like, we should have had church on Sunday or canceled church on Sunday. And, like, everybody just needs to, like, pump the brakes and take a chill pill and quit judging people that do one way or the other. Uh, listen, our, our church, Spring First, had church on, on Sunday. Um, like, that decision, like, going forward is going to be made, like, week to week based on the facts and the requests by our president and all of the and those decisions will be made um you know our, our church inside our sanctuary we were like we hover right there around the threshold of where they were asking um you know not to gather in one place like more than 250 people as of last sunday and uh we're like we're like right there on the deal, we chose to go ahead and, and, and have church, and we'll make decisions going forward. But um, but the idea that because you know, well, our church is better because we had we had church, or this you know, or we have more faith. Listen, it's not about that. Like everybody has to do what they think is best for them, and we're not judging people. We weren't sitting around judging other churches that that didn't have church. That's not going to be my play in this. I know that there are other people that I have other friends that, that I, you know, I saw take, have a completely different take on it. Um, I was glad and excited that our church went forward, but it's not a big deal if other churches wanted to do something different. The great news is we have a lot, thank God we have the technologies that we have to be able to still do whatever we need to do. But, um, I heard somebody mention like, oh, they, they were afraid that they you know, might have made some of the people mad at our church because they you know, were saying that had pretty strong statements on the other side. Listen, I, I'm, I'm not offended by that. However, whatever you decide to do with your family is your business. You know, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, but you know, the Bible says that the expectation of the righteous will not be cut off. And and we teach about this a lot, but you're going to get what you expect. So listen, if it, it, and we, we talk about this a whole, whole lot, but faith is attached to vision. Uh, Hosea 4, 6 talks about uh, vision. Uh, the book of Proverbs talks uh, about without, without a vision, the people cast off restraint. Um, Hosea 4, 6, not Isaiah, Hosea 4, 6. Uh, says, without a vision, the people perish. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you've rejected knowledge. I also reject you. Um, so with that, the scripture that we talk about where, a where the Lord takes Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 up on, on top of the mountain, and he says, as far as your eye can see, will I give it to you? So we, we understand that that faith is attached to spiritual vision, spiritual vision in the natural. So what do you see? So if 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 you see what the Word of God says, 
and I, I heard people like debating what, what, what the Bible says. Listen, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you think the Bible means. It matters what the Bible says, okay? Okay, so follow me on this because we've got to find the balance of, on, on this. It doesn't matter how you believe. Well, I, I can't say that. That's not true because it does matter how you believe. Uh, let me try to articulate this where I'm not... Um, If you don't have faith to walk exempt, then, and you feel that you need to stay home from large gatherings, then stay home. Nobody's like, that, that's probably a wiser decision for you. But, and it doesn't make you less of a person or, or, or that other people should be judging you by this. But if you have revelation from, from scripture that where you see, in like Psalm 91 has just come alive in you, well, other, other people shouldn't be offended at other people that have great faith to say, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna be touched by this I'm, because they have an understanding that we're set apart because the Bible does say that we're set apart. But the expectation's not gonna be cut off. Whatever you're expecting, that's what you're gonna get. And I'm not saying like if you don't have faith to not walk exempt that you're going to get the coronavirus. That's not what I'm saying either. I'm saying that we've got to have the balance and we've got to understand and we have to respect other people. And like, can we just love people <laughs> and not like be like ridiculous on either side? I, th I think that's, I think that's what we should do. You know, I heard people arguing. Well, I think that, you know, that's not what Jesus would uh, do. Listen, if Jesus was here, would he be susceptible? Could Jesus have ever gotten the coronavirus? No, I, I, I think clearly from scripture, we can see that that wasn't going to be possible for him. Okay, what, was, what would he do here? Well, he, if, if he knew people with coronavirus, we can read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, I think he would have healed them. That was his will. He came here to show the will of his father. And we talk about this all the time. I'll show you this in scripture. We're going to talk about it as we get in talking about divine healing, that it's it's God's will for people to be healed, that all would be healed, okay? Does that mean that that's the experience of everybody? No. For what reason? Well, Proverbs 26, 2 says the curse causeless doesn't come. So there's a reason. We don't, maybe, we don't understand the reason all of the time, but there's a reason if they're not healed, and it's not because God's willing them to be sick, okay? We have to understand where sickness is, and disease is coming from, but it is God's will that we would be healed. We've got to balance all of this and not cast judgment on people that are at one extreme or the other, you know? Um, listen, I think the best advice that we can give as a church is let's just love people and do our very best. I think all of us are trying to do our, our very best to work and sort all of these things out. But I'll need to calm down. Um, and I'll address this as it regards to our church and uh, our pastors in studio today. Join us. He, he's our studio audience, in our studio audience today. And uh, I, I think that you would ag agree with this statement. Uh, we take a very bold stance on faith, divine healing. Anybody that goes to our church or, or follows these teachings or, or watches our broadcast knows we take a, a very bold stance uh, on that, but we're not condemning other people that maybe don't see that in scripture or don't believe that way. You're still our friends and we're not, we don't think we're better than everybody else. Okay. We're, we're just running after everything. This is our prayer. Lord, let no good thing be left behind. And what we can see from scripture is that unbelief does cost you part of the inheritance. If you don't have faith to believe that faith to believe what the word of God says is the key that unlocks certain areas of blessings. Put up John chapter one, verse 12. This is the same way that, that we walk into salvation. If you, if you don't have faith to believe that Jesus is the son of God, then you can't be saved. That's the key. But as many as received him, this is the scripture, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. To anyone who believed in his name, he gave the right to become a child of God. So what was, what is the key to accessing, becoming 
a child of God, to access the inheritance as a, as a son or a daughter of the King of kings and Lord of lords. It's belief, and it, it's, it, it's that right there. It's that right there. You, you, you will never hold in your hand what you can't get out of your mouth, and you can't, you're not going to get it out of your mouth if you don't see it in scriptures. So that's why we, we put a high stock in under, letting the word of God being birthed in our heart and, and having a revelation uh, of that. And I, and I see a whole bunch of people talking about, that doesn't mean you know, there's Christians that get sick every day. I don't disagree with that. There's good people. I, I've seen really good Christians that I know. There's people that I know that love the Lord with all of their heart. I know they're saved and I've seen them pass away of, because of, of sickness and infirmity. And I hate that. It drives me crazy. There's times that I, I have not understood that, but we don't build doctrine based on our bad experiences. Just because one person doesn't get healed does not negate the fact that Christ is the healer. And, uh, and we're going to keep running and working hard to align our life and our faith with what the Word of God says and taking risks to pray for people, to declare that people are healed, doing all of those things. Uh, and in the midst of, of that, we need to make sure that we're not condemning people that aren't quite there yet on having a revelation of what the Bible really says. Because listen, it wasn't that long ago that we were in that. We were in that spot. I think 10 years ago, the, the spiritual violence that, with which we believe about the blessings of God, we, I, I wasn't there yet. Faith is built. We have to build our faith. That was the, the instruction. Okay? So, everybody follow me with that? What are your thoughts on that? You can comment. You can comment. Let us know. I'll try to, like, read them as we're going. Let's look at this. I'm going uh, to try to give some facts about divine healing, and then at the end I'm going to share what we're doing and what I encourage you to do by faith uh, to, to make sure that you are set apart and that your, that your home is covered, that you, your body is covered, that your children are covered uh, by the blood of Jesus and a hedge is built around uh, you. And we're going to do that by faith towards the end of this uh, broadcast. But let's look at some facts from Scripture about sickness, disease, and divine, divine healing, okay? Number one, sickness is no more natural than sin is, okay? Let's look at uh, Genesis. Go to the book of Genesis, okay? I think we could all agree that we're created in God's image and that when he created us, didn't he say that the creation was good? I believe he did. Let's go to Genesis chapter one. Look at verse 31, Genesis chapter one, verse 31. It says, then God saw everything that he had made and indeed it was very good. You've been created in God's image and he likes you. He sees, he sees you and he says that you are good, okay? He has created you to be healthy in the same way that he, he has not created you to be a sinner. He's not created your body to be full of sickness. Sickness is no more natural than sin. God made everything very good, according to Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. Therefore, we should not look for the remedy of sin or sickness in the natural. But what do we do? Hebrews, put Hebrews 12, verse 2 up. What, do, what, what is the answer? We look unto Jesus. We don't look for the remedy in sickness in the natural, but from God who created us happy, strong, healthy, and to be in good fellowship with him. Hebrews 12, 2 says, looking unto Jesus, the author, the author. He's the one who created us and made us, and he's the finisher. I love the scripture that says that he who began a good work is faithful to complete it. That's in uh, Philippians. Looking into Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He purchased back our health and our spirit man to be in fellowship with him and to be clean. That was number one. Sickness is no more natural than sin is. 
to, to our body. Number two, sin and sickness came into the world through the fall of the human race. Therefore, we must look for the healing of both our spirit man of, of, and, and sin and in our natural body regarding sickness, we have to look for the remedy in the savior of the human race, which is Jesus Christ. Sin and sickness came into the world through the fall of man. Put up John 10, 10. How do we ever get through a broadcast without posting this? Where does sickness and disease come from? It, it's all from the devil. The thief does not come except to steal, kill, and just to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. We have to recognize is that, that the the beginning point of the coronavirus is the, the, the origins of this is birthed in the heart of Satan who wants to destroy us. That he maybe use people to create, it's becoming increasingly clear that this is a, that the virus is created in a lab somewhere. Is it people? First uh, Corinthians 10, or is it First Corinthians, yeah, 10 verse 4? Put that one up, 1 Corinthians 10, 4. No, do 4, 10, 1 Corinthians 4, 10. First Corinthians 4, 10. No, nope. try 2 Corinthians 10, 4. I know it's one of these. I got four shots. 2 Corinthians 10, 4. Yeah, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but for the pulling down of strongholds and casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing, you need to go to the next one, every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Go to verse three. Can you find the one that says uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood? That might be uh, Philippians 6. What? Ephesians 6. 6.10 is uh, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. 12. Verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We're not fighting people. Okay? Uh, if this is... Who, who started the coronavirus? Is, is it China? Is it the deep state? Is it the new world order? I, who knows? You know, we could talk conspiracy theories. Trust me, I love talking about these stuff, th these things. But nobody actually really knows. But we, I know this: our battle's not with the people that did this. It's or, the origin is Satan, and that's where we need to be praying against. Okay, that's what we need to be praying against, not our enemy. You know, these people in Wuhan. Listen, it's the devil. This thing came from the devil. He birthed it in somebody's heart to do. But both sin and sickness came into the world through the fall of the human race. Therefore, we must look to healing for healing for both sin and our, and our bodies through the, the Savior, who is Jesus Christ. We can look to him. Number three, when God called his children out of Egypt, I love this one, he made a covenant of healing with them. Uh, turn over to uh, Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. Exodus 15, 26. Remember this, that the blessings of the covenants get better and better as they go along. Okay, if this is the covenant that he's making with Israel in Exodus 15, we're like four covenants ahead of them now. That's wonderful news. 1526 says, if you dil diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all of his statues, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Isn't that wonderful? The idea that they walked out of Egypt, they didn't even really know how to trust the Lord yet. He was teaching them that he would be their healer. And they would complain and they, constantly through the Old Testament, they would turn from the Lord and then they would repent and the Lord would, would heal them. That's what we've got to learn to do. Walk in a covenant relationship with the Lord and then understand that he, he takes away. He will put none of the diseases on us which he brought on the Egyptians. Egyptians are a type of Satan. He 
made a covenant of healing with them. Throughout their history, we find them in sickness and in pestilence, turning to God in repentance and confession. And always, I love this. This is what we need to understand too. Uh, T.L. Osborne teaches this. It just opened my eyes to this. But every time they would repent, he would forgive their sin. He would heal their spiritual sickness. But at the same time, the natural, the, the natural uh, manifestation of their repentance manifested is that they were healed and saved from their enemies and then delivered also from sickness and disease, but also from their enemies that were chasing after them and then healing their land. We've seen a lot of people quoting that verse, uh, Second Chronicles, I believe, 714. If my people who are called by my name, who will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then I will hear from heaven, turn towards them and heal their land. It's great stuff. But every time that their sins got forgiven, they were also healed. T.L. Osborne began giving altar calls, giving salvation calls, and, and letting people know, as you turn to Jesus, he's going to heal your infirmities. And he would have mass healings in his crusades. Thousands of people that would, be, that would be saved as they accepted Christ into their heart, and they would be healed at the same time. It also saved him a lot of time doing prayer lines. That's the reason that he did this. He, he said, Lord, you've got to show me how to, to, to have greater impact in the area of healing because he would preach salvation one night and then he would have a healing service. And the Lord says, why are you doing these different? Just tell them that I'm going to heal them when they get saved. And once they attach their faith to, to receive forgiveness of their sins and healing in their body at the same time, it happened. Why? Because as far as your eye can see, will you get it? If you can't, it, the, the, he wasn't teaching that. Did you know this? Jesus can only be, he can only be who we preach him to be. If we don't, if I don't sit here and tell you that God is able to heal you and exempt you from coronavirus, you won't know. Therefore, you, you'll sit, you could sit around worrying uh, uh, and, and be in fear. No, we're not going to do that. We're not, we're not going to do that. And, and, and th that offends people. The fact that I would sit here and say that your home can be exempt. That's, I'm just telling you what the Bible says. If you're, in a if you're walking in a covenant relationship with the Lord. Now, if you don't understand, may, this is where the, the rub runs right here. Is when people are saved, they believe in God for salvation, but they don't understand that they have a promise of exemption and, and a hedge that would be built up. If you don't understand that, it opens the door for, for doubt and for the devil to come in to that because he's going to try to steal anything that you're not holding on to. Okay? If, if my dad's in the room, if he uh, gives me... He provides me, because I work here, he provides me with an iPhone. He hands me the iPhone, and he says, David, uh, this is your iPhone. But if somebody from outside comes in and, because he, my dad's given me this, I know this is my iPhone. So if you come into the room and say, no, that's my iPhone, I'm going to take it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at you and go, you better put my phone down. That's mine. My, my, my father has given that to me. I, I was there when he said it. I can... I, we can call him right now and he'll tell you this is my he'll, he will attest that this is mine okay because of that you won't be taking my iphone it, but what is it if you've been given if you've been given a gift but you don't know if the gift was for you or not and somebody comes in have you ever been confused about oh, well somebody took this well i didn't know it was mine and you let somebody else walk away with it because oh i didn't know that that was for me was that for me that's how I, so many people deal with an inheritance that we have through Christ with gifts that we've been given, especially in the area of divine healing, because they don't understand what they have access to. And if you don't understand what has been given to you, then you won't violently protect the thing that you know is yours. And when you have the knowledge of it, you won't be taking my phone. And in the same way you won't be taking my phone, I can tell you with great confidence, not trying to be arrogant, because I know who Jesus is, and I see in his word what he says that I can have, I can declare to you that we're going <laughs> to walk exempt from coronavirus. Why? Because Jesus, because of, because of the blood of Jesus, because of his life that is in us. We'll talk about this at the end. But when we take the communion, notice that there's two pieces of it. We take on the body of Christ. That's for our 
That's for our healing of our, in the natural. The, the bread, we eat the bread, we're taking the body of Christ into us. His life, his incorruptible body for mine, and then the blood of Jesus, which forgives my sin. It goes in. It, it speaks of, of cleansing of my spirit, man. And the bread is the cleansing of my natural physical body. And when you understand both of those things, man, good things begin to happen to you. All right, number four, God healed those. Oh, I love this. In this, uh, the story in Numbers chapter 21. Let's read this story. It's, it's phenomenal. It's, a, it's an Old Testament uh, type or a shadow of what it would be like in the new covenant in the new testament church which that's us but uh, turn to numbers uh chapter 21 let's just start at the beginning i'm going to read it off the screen so just start in verse uh one and we'll read through uh some of this i'm going to turn there because it's easier to read here but here's the point that we're going to make um number four god healed those who were bitten by fiery serpents as they looked at a brazen serpent On a pole, which is a type of Calvary, the cross, if everyone who looked at the brazen serpent was healed, then it is logical that everyone who looks at Jesus and looks to Jesus can now be healed. That was the point uh, that, that the Lord was teaching us in this. Let's look at this. This is a powerful, powerful scripture. Did you know this was like a, this was like a plague that was happening in the camp of the Israelites? Numbers chapter 21. This was their coronavirus, if you will. Lots of people were dying, and and the Lord told Moses, hey, this is how you fix this. Let's start with verse 4. Then they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom, and the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way. I want to encourage you, I'll give you homework. Go read 1 Corinthians 10 and you can see what things are forfeited because they were complaining when they became discouraged. Hey, lift up your heart. If you're discouraged about what's happening with like all of the shutdown, I'm discouraged too. Lupe Tortillas only has takeout now. Listen, there's some inconveniences that we're experiencing, right? Some of you have small children and school helps you keep your sanity and and they're out. I understand all of those things. Don't be discouraged. Let's Let's, be, let, let's stay happy. We can handle it, okay? We can handle it. We're going to make it through this. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and our soul loathes this worthless bread. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and many of the people of Israel died. Lots of people dying. Why? Because the Lord removes his hand because they're complaining against him. Listen, complaining is a sin against God. When you're complaining about the good things, that the Lord has promised them covenant exemption and, and, and provision for every need that they have. And as they're complaining and, 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 and cursing their leader uh, about these things, the Lord says, fine, if you're going to act that way, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to reward that behavior. Many of you have had, as parents, have had children that are complaining and you've promised things to your kids and they, they're in, they get in a mood and start complaining. Macy's in studio with us today. She'll tell you. How many times have you heard me say, Macy, I'm not going to reward that kind of behavior. She knows. Like, I don't have to hardly even say it anymore. Uh, she knows I can't handle, like, like, complaining. We have good lives. We have good things. We have nice things. Don't complain about stuff. There's people that, there's people that are hap, happy to get anything to eat each day. And we have three good meals. Let, let's not complain about anything, right? So the Lord sent serpents, that's verse seven, uh, that's verse six. Verse seven says, therefore the people came to Moses and said, we've sinned. So here we have them repenting. He said, we've sinned, we've spoken against the Lord, we've uh, spoken against you. Moses, would you pray to the Lord that he would take away these serpents from us? So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord Lord speaks to Moses. He says, make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole that it should be. That everyone who is bitten, when he looks at the serpent on the bronze serpent on the pole, when they look at it, they shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole. And so it was, if a serpent had bitten anyone, When he looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. Listen, any of you, I want you to know this. Even if you were to get coronavirus, 
You can look to Jesus and he's the healer. Anyone who looks, whatever the disease is, anybody that looks to Jesus in faith, let's restore that covenant. Let's guard that covenant relationship with the Lord. He, you know what? The Holy Spirit has been given to us to teach us and to convict us of sin. How did they know that they had sinned? They, they knew. They knew that they had done something wrong and they came back. Listen, when you've done something wrong, if there's something that's causing you to have a breakdown in the, your covenant relationship with the Lord, ask the Holy Spirit to show you what it is and then go rid that thing out of your life. Repent of it and then look to Jesus. Did you know that this bronze serpent became an idol that they began to worship to the point that later on they had to, they had to say, hey, go destroy that thing because people are worshiping it. They weren't understanding that it was a, it was a foreshadowing for us of the, of the Hebrews 12, uh, verse 2, of, that we can look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Great story. Everyone, did you know this? Anyone, there was no exemption. Anybody that looked at the pole was healed. Anyone, not just some, well, it wasn't God's will to heal me. I got bit and I looked at the pole and it didn't work. No, that, that was not their testimony. That didn't happen. Number five. Jesus said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so, for the same person, for, for the same purpose, must the Son of Man be lifted up. Uh, go to John chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. John chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. Now, we all know verse 16, but uh, Jesus is talking to Nicodemus here in John chapter 3, and he's teaching Nicodemus because he knew this story. He said, hey, Nicodemus, do you remember in the Old Testament, you remember reading Numbers chapter 21? Remember how Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness? Even so, the Son of Man must be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And then we all know, verse 16, that says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have, have everlasting life. Did you know that in John 3, 16, we all relate this to spiritual healing of our sins, but Jesus here was actually referring to a story where they were being divinely healed. For, uh, so you need to understand and read this verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish in their physical body, have sickness and disease, but have everlasting life. You need to know that you can be healed and saved at the same time through John 3, 16. Number six, the people had sinned against God. The people had sinned against God. Humankind has sinned against God today. Did you know that we know this? Uh, Romans 3, 23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Everybody has sinned. We understand that, but we can repent and be healed. Number seven, these are facts about sickness, disease. No, fact number seven, the poisonous serpent's bite resulted in death. In the same way, our sin results in death, right? Go to Romans 6, 23. We've established that everybody's sin. Now we're establishing what is the punishment of that? For the wages of sin is death. The bite of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Number eight, fact number eight, the people cried to God and he heard their cry and provided a remedy. This is in the Old Testament. He provided an, a remedy. The serpent lifted up those who cry out to God. Today, discover that God has heard their cry and has provided them a remedy as Christ was lifted up. So we don't have to look to the bronze serpent anymore. We look to Jesus. So maybe you have a different sickness today. Did you know, I see Wanda's walk, watching today. We had three people in our, in our prayer meeting Sunday night have their knees healed miraculously. The Lord healed uh, Nancy Crisp. She came and gave a testimony. And then right there we prayed, uh, we prayed for everybody that was having knee problems and, and that we know of. We had, uh, we had, I think, three immediately that were healed right then. Yeah, great stuff. Number nine, the remedy was for everyone that was bitten. The remedy was for everybody. The same way now, the, the remedy of Jesus on the cross, looking into Jesus, the remedy is for everyone who believes in the area of divine healing. You can walk exempt. Let's look at this. Um, 
Fact 10. Jesus said that certain teachers made the word of God of no effect. This is why I love, because this is the thing. My dad says hello. Hey, Dad, it's good to see you. I was actually David Satterfield. Oh, different David. I thought he was talking to me. David Satterfield? Yes, my friend. All right. Hey, David Satterfield. I don't, do I know him? Maybe. Yes, you do. Maybe? All right. We're glad you're watching. My dad says hello. He's talking to you and not to me. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying. Hey, all of the Davids are, that are watching, we just want to say hello. Okay, let's look at this. This is powerful right here because uh, this is one of the things that I see happening because there's so much confusion in the church. Um, like looking at like the Facebook feeds, you can see people uh, like arguing, not and, and uh, more debating, I guess. You know, well, I, you know, I, I believe, you know, there, there are some preachers, I heard somebody indirectly kind of making a comment about our church. And listen, I'm not offended by this. I know that we like are running after like 100% pure faith. So I'm not offended when people like go, you know, they're taking it too far. You can say what you want to about me, but I, I'm not concerned about that. I, I don't care about what you think about. I, I, I'm not saying this like arrogantly or like pointed, okay? For me, I only care about what the Bible says, what it, what it says. I'm not, I'm not worried about anybody's interpretation about what it says. I, I ha, have done my best to be a studier of God's word, to make sure that I understand how to interpret the Bible. I've gone to Bible training, four years of Bible training, to make sure that I understand the proper way to interpret scripture. We let ter scripture interpret scripture. We don't read things in. We only take it at face value. And here's what, where I'm at with the whole thing. I, I'm not worried about how you feel about like what, what it means. I only care what it says, okay? And I'm gonna take, we're gonna take it at face value. That's the way we teach it. I don't, I'm not gonna read a scripture and go, well, you know, he says that we were healed, but I don't know that's actually what it means. I don't, I don't play that game. Um, but there are certain teachers that have made the word of God of no effect through their tradition. There are traditions. There, there, are, there are entire denominations that have built. We talk a lot here, like in our Bible school, on the broadcast at our church, uh, we talk about the Jesus standard. The standard, he, he's our standard of faith and conduct. Um, in this isn't in my notes, so let me try to remember where this is at. Uh, this is in the book of Galatians chapter one. Uh, Paul starts rebuking the Galatians and he says, I am blown away. He goes, I can't believe how quick you're turning away from the gospel that I preached to you. He goes, I gave it to you straight. I gave it to you straight up. And he says, I'm telling you, if anybody comes and tries to change this or water it down, he, he, he starts speaking in hyperbole here. He says, literally, even if me or someone else or an angel from heaven comes and preaches a different gospel, let them be cursed with a curse. And so what, what is our standard? The standard is Jesus. What has he told us? In, in John chapter 14, verse 12, he says, the things that you've seen me do, you will do also. This, the way that you've watched me live. So what, how do we look? Do we see any occurrence in scripture where we, we see Jesus needing divine healing or being sick? We never see it. Do we ever see uh, Jesus not healing somebody? Anybody that asked, he healed them all. Over and over and over again in the New, New Testament, we see he healed them all. He healed them all. Uh, Mark 9, 23, he heals them all. He healed them all. Uh, Acts 10, 38, we know uh, how Jesus of Nazareth went about doing good, healing all who were sick and oppressed by the devil. Yeah, healing them all over and over and over again. So what's the Jesus standard? Let's not dumb it down because, well, you know, I just don't know if that worked. It doesn't work that way. I think they're, you know, I think they're misinterpreting scripture. No, no. Let's go to the Jesus standard and then let's work hard to like, to live there and to build our faith to walk in that. Build our faith to walk at the Jesus standard. Not like, no, this is 2020. We're living in 2020 and sometimes, you know, there's good Christian people that get sick. Is that true? 
Yes. Does that mean that's the standard? Do we build? Are we building doctrine off what the Word of God says or what the experiences that we see other people experience? That's, that's my whole point with this entire thing. When it comes to cancer, when it comes to, I know that there are those of you that are watching, and this is where it, this is where it gets hard for us to, to separate because there's some of you that are watching and you've had, you've had people that you know and love that you know loved the Lord, that, that, that worked hard to live a righteous life and you saw them maybe die of a disease or a cancer or something like this. Uh, I am not here saying that those people didn't have enough faith or anything like that. I don't understand. I don't understand why some people that are good people that love Jesus pass away. I hate that. It breaks my heart. But as hard as that is, we cannot build the traditions of men and build doctrine on bad experience. We have to look at what the Bible says and hold on to that, okay? And, 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 we, and, and don't be offended. We're not, we are not saying, there, there, there are people that would say, well, those people must have had sin in their life. I don't know what the problem was. I don't know what the block was. I know the Bible says there was something holding it back, but I know that the, the problem wasn't Jesus, and I'm not saying that the problem was that person. I'm not saying that. I don't know what it is. But our standard, our standard is the Jesus standard. Lord, here is your word. Here's what you've promised. And we're going to hold on to what your word says. Look at, um, this is in Mark chapter 7, verse 13. Jesus is talking to them about how the, they, he's talking to them about giving. He said, you've got an instruction to take care of your parents. But then you say, well, I'm going to give to the church. So I, don't, I gave the money that I was going to take care of my family with. I gave it in the offering so I don't have anything else to give. And then you negate the word of God, making it of no effect. Mark chapter 7, verse 13. It says, Jesus talking, says, making the word of God of no effect through your tradition, which you have handed down. Let's only hand down the Jesus standard. This is what, this is what I'm instilling in my kids. I, and I, I can tell you this, my, my children take heat for it because Macy's here. We, we teach it and we believe it violently in our household, don't we? Does it mean that, that we don't have, some of us have sickness come into our house sometimes? Okay, we've, since we've been believing this, we've seen a drastic decline in sickness in our household. Okay, but we're still working on like walking this out, aren't we? Every day, we're still working on walking this thing out. And if somebody gets sick, we get annoyed. It annoys us. We're like, ah, this experience isn't lining up with what the Bible says that I can, that I can have. But we've, have we seen a drastic reduction? We have, very rarely, very rarely do we get sick. Yesterday morning, Aubrey was still sleeping in late, but me and Amy and Macy, we met in the kitchen. Um, I went to the store. I'll encourage you to do this in the deal with coronavirus. Uh, don't go clear, don't go stockpile groceries, but go get what you need and be prepared. Be, listen, preparing for the worst does not, is not a lack of faith. The reality is, is that they, they could impose you know, a two, three, four, worst case scenario, up to like eight week quarantine where they make us not leave our houses and stuff like that. We should be prepared for that. I went to the grocery store early yesterday morning and got the things that, uh, that we would need. We needed a lot of things because we don't eat at home a whole, whole lot. But uh, when I say a whole, whole lot, we don't eat at home hardly ever. <laughs> um, so I went to the grocery store and uh, you know, there's the, the pickings were, were slim. Uh, because a lot of people are doing this, but I'll encourage you to do that too. You need to be able to eat every meal at home for your family uh, for probably 30 days. Be prepared for that. Don't go stockpile everything. Isn't it funny to me? Um, it's funny to me, like the fact that everybody goes and stockpiles toilet paper. You know, it goes along with that scripture, man shall not live by bread alone. Yeah, listen, guys, you can't eat teepee, okay? <laughs> Quote of the day. All right, there, there's other ways you can, you know, keep clean. Don't go there. <laughs> my, my dad's here, he's sitting here, he goes, uh, he goes, don't go there. 
I won't go there. But, you know, get, be prepared. Be prepared. Get, have, have, be able to feed your family. I'll encourage you to do this. Get a little extra so that you can help others maybe in your neighborhood that don't have the finances maybe uh, to, to be prepared for that long. Um, listen, if it went to this, if you look at what happened in Italy, uh, the, their current situation, only one person in a household is allowed to leave the house at a time and can only be going to the grocery store. But single parents can't leave their kids at home. They're not allowed to do that. So the single parents are really suffering. So, hey, if you, if you know people in your neighborhood or on your block that are maybe single moms, single dads, stock up a, a little bit extra so that you can be giving. I think that's what Jesus call, has called us to do. But let's be prepared. But also... Don't go stockpile and go clean out everything off. We're not trying to cause a run on the on the grocery stores. As of right now, there you know there's a little bit of a shortage, but there, the trucks are still running. We have an incredible supply chain here in the United States, and um, but but make sure you have the things that you need if, if for a worst case scenario. Uh, Jesus said, "Your the traditions of men are making the word of God of no effect." I think that's. I think that so many churches have done this by, by teaching and building doctrines off, these, off our bad experiences is that we make the word of God of no effect. And I'm here to declare to you today that the word of God is still alive and, 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 and active and, and powerful, powerful. It's still able to do the thing that it says it'll do. You can, st by his stripes, you were still healed. Let's not make the word of God of no effect. What, what, what are those traditions? One of the traditions is that God wills some of his children to suffer sickness. This is a tradition of men, is that God wills some of his children to suffer sickness and that therefore many who have prayed and are not healed because it's not God's will, will to heal them. That is a tradition of men that has been handed down from bad experiences that is, that is negating and making of no effect the powerful word of God. And we have to run, run straight into the face of it. It is not God's will for anyone to be sick. First John, John is writing his friend Onesimus and he says, I would that you would prosper and be in health. It's God's will. How do we know God's will? We look to Jesus. Jesus was an exact representation of the Father. Jesus tells his disciples in John 14, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Philip's like going, I, we have, how, just show us the Father and then, and then that'll be sufficient for us. <laughs> and I, I picture Jesus laughing and smiling and saying, Philip, have I not, how, how long do I have to be with you? I've been with you this long and you still haven't seen the Father. If you've seen me, you've seen him. And they're still trying to process that. But how do we know the will of God? We look at the life of Jesus. Look at him, and that's the will of the Father. Did Jesus ever answer somebody, listen, I want you to wait. I know that you want to be healed right now. I know that you've come to me. You've pushed through the crowd, and you're, and you're seeking a healing. But listen, there's like two more things that I'm trying to teach you in this trial. So why don't you come back to me next week, and when you've learned that lesson, oh, Jesus, what's the lesson? You're going to have to go figure it out. No, there's only one person in recorded scripture that even asks if it's your will. It's the blind man. He says, no, I, I, I am willing. It is my will to heal you. And he, and he touched him and, and was, he was made whole. It's God's will for you to be healthy and whole. It is God's will for you to be healed. It is God's will. Can you type that in the comments by faith? It is God's will for me to be healthy. It is God's will for coronavirus to have zero effect on my life and in my family. That's God's will, 100%. Well, how do we know that? Because it's his, his word. When Jesus healed the demon-possessed boy whom the disciple could not heal, he, prov he proved that it is God's will to heal even those who, fail to, who have failed to receive healing. Furthermore, he assigned the failure to the disciples to cure the boy, not to God's will. Jesus assigned the blame. He said, these guys couldn't do it. They had a faith issue. This one comes not but by prayer and fasting. These guys haven't paid the price to like walk, walk in this level of healing. They're, they're dealing with a spirit of infirmity that's strong. 
that, that spirit of infirmity was stronger than their faith. Come on, we've got to build a faith in ourselves that is, that is ready, that is ready and built up that can match the task that is at hand. Yeah. Hey, build your faith to coronavirus level faith right now. Build your faith to incurable disease level faith. Exemption from those things. Let's build our faith. If you're not there yet, we're not condemning you. Listen, we're on a journey. I'm on a journey to get there. I look at people that run, uh, run ahead of me. I hear stories about John G. Lake. I hear stories about him, and I'm thinking, my faith is not there yet. There's a higher place to go. I read about John, the apostle John, my, uh, and, and see that they put him in a, a deal of boiling water or a boiling oil to murder him and he comes out unscathed. And I'm like, okay, I've, I, I, I've, we've got some work to do. Let's, let's go to that level of faith. Let's go to that level of faith. It, but what does it cause John to do? Go read the book of First John. Go read it and look at what happens to him, what John is saying. Because of his experience, he, he says in First John 5, 18, he goes, I can tell you this, that if anyone keeps himself Put 1 John 5, 18. If anyone keeps himself from sin, we know that whoever is born of God doesn't sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself and the wicked one doesn't even touch him. He's writing that out of an experience of saying, they tried to kill me and they couldn't. They couldn't touch me because the life of Jesus resides in me. He gave me his body. This is at late, late in his life, early, Right after the cross, they didn't get it. But in old age, he has had a revelation that the life of Jesus Christ, that the life that I'm now living in the flesh, like what Paul says, I live by faith in the Son of God who died for me, who gave himself for me, who now lives in me. Paul writes in Romans 8, uh, 11, if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, he'll quicken your mortal body. And what? Raise you back to life. Later on, in, uh, or earlier, in uh, Romans 6, two chapters before that, he's talking about that, hey, we've been buried with him, but we've, if we're buried with him, then we're raised with him. So the resurrection life of Jesus Christ is living in me. And if, if the grave couldn't hold Jesus, then it can't hold you. Well, David, everybody has to die. Yes, it is appointed unto man once to die, but that doesn't have, that's not, that's not designed by God for it to be sickness. It's, it's designed by God for it to be like T.L. Osborne and, and Kenneth Hagin that get to the end of their life. I love the story of T.L. Osborne. Wakes up healthy and whole on Valentine's Day, eating breakfast with his daughter, with his daughter LaDonna Osborne. And he says, honey, I miss my wife Daisy today. I think I miss Daisy today. I wanna go see her. Healthy, whole, the life of God leaves him. He just stops breathing, healthy and whole. Lived out his life, lived out his days, fulfilled everything he'd been preaching and then goes to be with his wife and with Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? Hagen, same thing. Sits down at the dinner table. Guys, I want to let you know, I feel better today than I felt in my whole life. I'm healthy. I'm whole. Bows his head, stops breathing. That's how it's supposed to be. That's how it's supposed to be. I'm going to show you one more thing from Scripture. Turn to, y'all remember the Scripture that we quote all the time in Second Chronicles 16, 9? For the eyes of the Lord are searching the whole earth, looking for somebody to show himself strong on their behalf. I want to, do you know what story that's in the middle of? You know what happened? Look at verse. Hanani is a prophet that's sent to King Asa. Okay, he's the king of Israel. At that time, Hanani, the seer, came to Asa, king of Judah, 
This is during the divided kingdom, so it's not the king of Israel. He's the king of Judah, which would be the north, northern kingdom. Judah is part of Israel from the beginning, but they kind of like had like a civil war type thing, and the kingdom was divided, northern kingdom and Israel. So Judah and Israel. David becomes king and unites it back. And at the time, Hanani, the seer, came to Asa, king of Judah, and said to him, because you have relied on the king of Syria... Instead of crying out to the Lord, he calls for another king to, to make war against him, uh, against his enemy. He says, because you've not relied on the Lord, therefore the army of the king of Syria has escaped from your hand. He had a conquered enemy, and he, he relied on somebody else to come and, and help him. And he says, because you didn't rely on the Lord, the blessing and the dominion that I've given you over Syria has left your hand. So what, what do we see from here? Not relying on the Lord, we forfeit spiritual blessings and provision, spiritual dominion we release when we don't rely on the Lord, okay? That's in, that's in like other uh, physical things not relating to divine healing, but look what happens to him later. He said, were the Ethiopians and the Lubim not a huge army with very many chariots and horsemen, yet because you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. Verse 9, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. In this you have done foolishly. Therefore, from now on, you, you're going to have wars because you didn't rely on the Lord. Then Asa was angry with the seer, and he put the prophet in prison, for he, in, he was enraged at him because of this. And Asa oppressed some of the people at that time. So angry man, not relying on the Lord, not a really great uh, guy, but look what happens to him next. It says, note that the acts of Asa, first and last, all of these things are written in, in, in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. Verse 12. And in the 39th year of his reign, Asa became diseased in his feet. And his malady, that's an interesting word, his malady was severe. His malady, his sickness, his disease, his infirmity was very severe, yet his disease, yet in his disease, look, look at this, in his disease, he did not seek the Lord, but went to the physicians. He did not seek the Lord, but only the physicians. So Asa rested with his fathers. He died in the 41st year of his reign, and they buried him in his own tomb, which he had made for himself in the city of David. And they laid him to bed, which was filled with spices, various ingredients prepared in a mixture of ointments, and they made a very great burning for him. He died. He didn't turn to the Lord. He was only seeking natural remedies. Only seeking natural remedies. I want to encourage you today. Depend on the Lord. Be completely dependent on him. Build your faith to the place where you can be 100% dependent upon him. Am I telling you not to consult physicians? I'm telling you to depend on the Lord first is what I'm telling you. It says that Asa didn't, didn't look to the Lord. Let's look to the Lord as our very first thing, okay? My friend, John and Crystal McLennan says he went to Ramah when Hagen was still, oh, you went to Ramah Bible College. Oh, man. See, I didn't even know really about Ramah Bible College. I wish I would have gone to Ramah. I love me some Kenneth Hagen. And I never met the man. I'm jealous. I'm jealous. That's Crystal McLennan. There are good children's pastor friends in, in Florida. We miss you guys. Maybe we'll see you on a BGMC trip again soon. I'm jealous that you went to Ramah. If I could have it to do over again, I think I'd go there. I think I'd go there. All right, one of these days, one of these days, I'm gonna do an entire broadcast and just talk about, I, I won't do it on the Worldwide Impact page. I'll do it on my own personal page sometime. And we'll just talk conspiracies about coronavirus. How many of you would watch that? Anybody interested in that at all? Yeah, we'll talk about 
we'll have a couple guests on and we'll talk about all, all of the conspiracies. Where's this thing actually coming from? What's, I'll just do this, okay? I'll just leave you with a question, okay? Can we do this? Okay, I'm not gonna give you an introduction or anything like this, and we're not gonna talk about uh, Q or QAnon or anything like that, but I'll ask you this. Go research and find out and explain to me why the percentage of people with coronavirus, wh why is it that so many celebrities People from Hollywood, government officials worldwide are coming down with the, the disease. Go find, it's abnormally high. Like, way disproportionately high. Go find an answer to that question and then call me. Lift your hands to the Lord. Also, go figure out why twi Twitter, I don't know about Facebook, but Twitter uh, Google has been completely un, uh, like released, like things that uh, there would be, they were like shadow banned and blocked. You would go to try to uh, research. If you went and try to like Google about uh, people involved in the Illuminati and stuff like that, uh, it would just be blocked. You couldn't find it completely. It, it's completely open now. Anything you search for, it'll pop up results, which that's new. Very, very interesting. That began happening uh, earlier this week. It's very interesting. It is a, Stephanie Reed says, I went down a rabbit hole last night. Hey, the rabbit holes are deep, okay? It's a very twisted uh, web. Summer Seal says, and Q, you don't know Q? I'll tell you, uh, listen, Summer, call me. I'll tell you all about it. Lift your hands to the Lord and let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you so much for your word that is true. Lord, help us today, give us strength, the audacity to believe exactly what your word says as it relates to divine healing. Lord, we pray that you would help us build our faith to the Jesus level, the word level of what you say. Lord, this is whatever you say, every promise in the book it belongs to us. And Lord, we, we're working, we're striving to build our faith to that level. Lord, we pray, I, I pray, Lord, that um, that people have been watching today would have, Lord, re release to them the grace to increase their faith, to have a revelation of the word of God. Lord, thank you that your word never returns void. But as the seed, incorruptible seed, has been planted in their heart, Lord, I pray that it would produce harvest in their life of faith and exemption and covenant relationship with you. Lord, testimonies, healings are our portion, and we thank you for that. Lord, we thank you uh, for, Lord, you've given us, you have restored dominion and authority to us in the place where we live. And Lord, we declare over our homes, over our churches, over our families and our friends, Lord, we declare healing. Lord, we pray against the spirit of infirmity, this uh, disease, the coronavirus. Lord, we pray that you would hold it back, neutralize it, wipe it out by the power of your great name. Lord, we thank you that the name coronavirus has to bow to the name that's above every name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Hey, good times today. Thanks for being with us. This is probably the, probably one of the most well-watched uh, teachings that, that we've had up near, I think we got up over the mid-30s. Uh, we're praying and asking the Lord to in, increase our territory on, on uh, Facebook. Share this broadcast with uh, people. I've, I've worked hard to have a, a very balanced and loving approach to how we deal uh, with these things. If you attend Spring First Church, uh, pay attention to uh, Facebook and uh, all of our social media pages, and we'll get, be giving you live updates about how, uh, how we're going to be handling services and all of that, and uh, we'll make those decisions as we go forward. But we love you guys. Thanks for watching, being uh, with us. If you want to donate, you can always uh, do that, type hashtag donate and uh, the amount that you want to give. So a seed that would represent your, be your best. You can pray till you're blue in the face about finances, but if you don't have offering in the ground, in the kingdom of God, you've got to sow seed into the kingdom of God financially to, re to reap a financial blessing. Praying won't bail you out of a financial issue if you don't have seed in the ground.
So give today, hashtag donate, or click on the link in the title, and you can do it that way. We love you guys. We'll be back tomorrow, same time. Your word declares that I shall be the head and not the tail. God wants to do it in you. You're, you're not too old. You're not too young. You understand the power and authority that you have at your fingertips? Well, I'm here to do your kingdom work, whatever that looks like. You're going to be burned. You're going to be carrying the fire, and it will repel every attack of the enemy.